Hello everyone, this is going to be somewhat of an experiment or like uh, like something uh, maybe it will catch on or maybe not but uh, this is uh, what I would call like a book review basically and um, yeah so maybe I do this in the future with other other books related to Russia maybe uh, we will see but uh, but the reason why I wanted to make this was uh, that I just finished reading maybe what I can ca categorize as the best book that I ever read, period. Like, seriously, I, I mean it. Um, because it's maybe, it's, I would say it's the, it's the first book that have made me literally cry, uh, tear, uh, tear to my eyes. Uh, something that I do... Uh, from time to time while watching movies but never while reading books no matter how uh, <laughs> how grotesque or how uh, devastating uh, they might seem i never uh, ever felt the tear until i read the book i'm going to talk about today and the book i'm going to talk about today it's called uh, uh, it's a german book i don't remember the t original title sorry my German friends, but uh, it's this book. It's uh, uh, it's that's it's called uh, the Eighth Life to Brilke. This is of course a Norwegian translation, uh, the Ottne Liebe till Brilke, and it's by the author uh, Nino Haratishvili. Like uh, she's a, uh, like a, a German Georgian author. Like she was born in Tbilisi in Georgia in nineteen. Uh, 83 and uh, but she's uh, lived in German for I think most of her life or like periodically but she's stationed in uh, Germany as of now and, uh, and this book uh, was originally written in German as well and I guess it wouldn't have been translated into Norwegian out of all those languages uh, if it were from Georgia <laughs> or yeah so that is kind of so maybe it's that that's the reason why she wrote in Georgia, uh, in German and not in Georgia uh, in Georgian. So yeah, but uh, what else can I say? It's like, uh, but yeah, yeah. This um, of course it might be a little strange talking about the Georgian uh, book uh, in this uh, podcast that as, that as I've stated. Is purely dedicated to Russian related themes uh, but uh, in this case I would make an exception or I would uh, defend uh, uh, me talking about it based on the on the fact that uh, most of the plot is uh, set in the during Soviet times and the, and the Russian influence or uh, uh, is a very strong uh, during that period, and so of course it can be looked uh, as a because it's a, a, a historical uh, epic uh, through the lens of the Soviet Union as a whole. So it's really it's relevant and it's uh, really interesting. But the, uh, uh, like uh, uh, like I the the uh, the novel uh, to uh, the. The Eighth Life to Brilka. It's a. Uh, it's basically a ge generational story uh, to uh, five genera like six generations, something like that. It's over. I would say it spans uh, like 110, 20 years, basically, and it follows. Yeah, it's basically. What should I say? Uh, like seven. Uh, loves these seven love stories basically it's, that's uh, why there are uh, like you can say it's like seven books and uh, or seven life like the eighth is kind of dedicated to uh, this uh, this person called Brilka uh, but yeah it's uh, like a generational story like it starts in the uh, late um, 1800s and uh, like, uh, but uh, we we start and uh, we mainly follow like uh, three characters. Like, there's a big uh, on this page. There's uh, there's even like a family tree here. 
like you think it's uh, very like it's very it's very useful uh, if you uh, forget the names and uh, yeah it's like uh, basically it's a uh, yeah so yeah you get like a big uh, like a great overview of it because it's uh, like uh, the yeah but yeah it mainly for it starts like in uh, in the early 1900s uh, like uh, during the Russian Empire and then uh, continues to the like the brief independence in the 20s and in Georgia and then uh, basically uh, the entire Soviet period like World War II uh, the stagnation era and of course like uh, like the the uh, the troubling 80s Karl Asnos and Perestroika and then of course the the civil war of the 90s and then um, eventually the uh, eventually the like the uh, the narrator of this book is a uh, is a uh, is a woman called, uh, named Nitsa who uh, like uh, who are uh, yeah who are basically telling the entire family story and uh, she ends up uh, going to Germany uh, moving to Germany uh, basically to uh, 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 like uh, avoid avoid the hardship of her, her country so and yeah it, it's a very so yeah it's a so yeah it's not a spoiler because basically it's show because she is the narrator basically but um, yeah so as, as I said, but the, what I find really interesting about this book is like it's it's as I said it's a generation story and of course there's a lot of characters, of course, which means um, you got to get a lot of backstories. But what's also fascinating is that there's also a lot of uh, uh, like side characters uh, who might seem like side characters at that point, but uh, will g get a greater importance. That's why it's kind of brilliant, because you don't know <laughs> when these characters uh, are going to appear again. So, uh, yeah, I like that. That's uh, one of the great, great uh, thing about this is that it's like uh, <laughs> the uh, quant quantity is uh, the best thing in this case. Even though some will argue sometimes quantity is not always the best, but I think this this work and also you get uh, many aspects of uh, uh, of uh, Georgian life basically, uh, like and you also uh, other pro uh, political. Uh, orientation because not everything is black and white of course there's some uh, some Georgians who are uh, pro-soviet uh, like uh, like a, ca a character named uh, Kostya or Konstantin uh, he Kostya like he is like a very pro-soviet war veteran and uh, etc and very uh, yeah very strict and very uh, uh, like a true Communist conservative, you could say. Uh, uh, when we get uh, later and la uh, later and later on, yeah. And uh, we also have like uh, like the more liberal voices, of course, as as the eighties uh, approach and independence approach, and this also, and uh, yeah, and you also have like the family dynamic of uh, of uh, like the the rebellious. Uh, uh, liberal f uh, forces within a family and like you have all this like you as it's been through the generation it is and uh, you get every side of it <laughs> like yeah that's uh, really what I like uh, about this is because it's all uh, all um, uh, encompassing you get every aspect of uh, Georgian society and uh, yeah then you can uh, basically like there's uh, like in an interview like there's been like a comparison that this might be what you can call the Georgian war and peace <laughs> because it's uh, because of the epic scale and you basically I would say you if you don't know Georgia you prep uh, you probably will get the essence of Georgia or uh, or at least Georgian history just by reading it and also the Georgian mentality so it's it's a really great book uh, but um, in that sense that it's an it's an uh, historical uh, uh, epic 
uh, of course fiction of course it's a, of course it's a fiction fictional uh, novel so yeah and the so yeah yeah you only if you are just a history buff you get that and of course there's some uh, altern uh, alternative uh, historical events with some actually some uh, real life characters uh, 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 like being involved with some of the main characters like uh, like uh, Beria for instance who <laughs> like uh, like he he is actually uh, one character who are, who the author refer to as the little big man and um, like he is basically sometimes the reason for uh, the suffering of uh, of a uh, few of these characters, our heroes, uh, for like directly or indirectly, because like it's it, it really gets the sense of what kind of monster he was, and uh, because he was Georgian, and so was the uh, so was Stalin, and uh, he uh, Stalin himself is always referred to as the I don't know what's what the uh, like I think. In English, it would be something like the general secretary. I don't know what 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 he's called, but like they they're trying. To, they are like uh, called not by their names, but basically as something distant, uh, something that is distant. And uh, yeah, and uh, but yeah, but if we like look away from the, the historical aspect, which is great, but also great. But what is really interesting about this novel is that uh, it is uh, really like it's really brutal at times and uh, yeah and uh, as I s yes it's, it's like uh, like there's so many surprises like uh, and uh, so many turns like you it's it's so predictable which uh, uh, most times actually for the worst you get like you just get so emotional, and for because there's a lot of bad things that happens, and uh, and, all, and of course, uh, many people die, and uh, it's uh, yeah, it's kind of like it feels sometimes feel like the Godfather. Not that it's a, a mob movie or anything like that. So it's just that it's uh, it is like it's brutal sometimes, uh, and sometimes and sometimes as brutal and. That uh, I can even cry. Uh, that I that I cr uh, cried a couple of times, but it's uh, it's like uh, what shall I say? It, it is uh, also nice to know that you have so, such a compassion uh, for these kind of characters, and uh, that is I don't know. It's I found that this was so, so, some, maybe it's some kind of revelation for me that I can be that invested. Of course, I've read. Uh, a lot of books before a lot of novels, but I don't consider myself. Uh, <laughs> but I don't consider myself a, a big uh, uh, like uh, a reading horse. I don't know how what's I don't got what kind of expression you have in English, but I, I don't consider myself a book a bookworm. I don't consider myself a a bookworm. Of course, I like reading when I, uh, especially during the case like vacations and holidays I like I like to read when I have time and don't have to uh, it's not over my head with uh, with correct curriculum that I have to read so this is but uh, yeah and even now I even have continued reading this book uh, as I've been studying a little bit and maybe it's kind of I hope that it got it got me hooked actually on reading more on my spare time uh, so yeah so with that I would say that uh, yeah I would say that uh, I actually have a plan of reading some uh, other uh, like uh, like uh, books by uh, Russian authors or like uh, about books uh, related to Russia in some time so I think like um, I'm gonna continue doing that and I hope uh, that it will catch on so I uh, I get more pleasure of reading on my free time and uh, and yeah and also uh, like at the end I say that if you have read this book and of course it's it's available in many languages English of course 
and Norwegian. I don't, I don't know. Sorry, I don't know about Russian, but uh, it's it's a really good book that I would recommend. And uh, and also, I would say that this is the best book that I ever read. So you should definitely check it out because it's. I don't know. For me, it's out of this world, but I think that more or less has to do that. I'm not a bookworm, but you can take it whatever you can take it the way you want. But um, but yeah, that's basically what I want to say. And uh, I hope maybe I will do this in the future. And as as I said, you can leave a comment and uh, if you have read this book and tell me what you thought about it. And uh, yeah, and I'll see you. Bye. Das Vidania. Gabar Choba.